Good afternoon, my name is Jim Walker. This is Ben Nielsen, Andrew Seedorf, and Colin Curtis, and together with the Revive Chess Navigation Open Control Team. Uh, the main goal of our project was to develop a large scale robotic representation of a virtual chess game being played on a computer. Uh, this was a multi team effort, so the mechanical engineering team that actually developed a robotic chess game that you see here, um, a computer science team that developed a user interface, and then our team, which ensured that the piece moves that are made on the video game are then translated to the actual robot movement. At the end of the first semester, we actually had this tank right here. Um, he was capable of detecting what square color he was on, as well as transitions, so he could move a designated number of squares. Um, that was about it. We had started developing our proportional speed control and had started testing compass sensors. Um, this semester, we selected the Arduino microcontroller <coughs> that we selected because it had several, um, many more um, digital I/O pins as well as interrupts. Um, had a large uh, amount of capacity to store our code because it's getting quite large now. Um, and we selected a, this h bridge motor driver. It's actually what we used to drive both sides of the motors. One issue we have with the tank is it drove straight automatically. The robot base didn't. Um, but Ben worked to develop um, some speed sensing code using rotor encoders to ensure that the robot actually moved straight. Uh, we used uh, four analog IR light sensors, so infrared light sensors, one mount at each corner of the robot. And uh, right now, the average of those is what we determine um, whether or not we're on a white or dark square. And we can check when we actually have a threshold change. So we use that to determine how far we've actually gone, how many squares we've gone, and what square we're actually in now. Um, we all work pretty heavily with that because that was one of the things that required the most time and effort to, to repeatedly test. We selected a Honeywell magnetometer that we use as a compass sensor. So we, that's how we get external feedback about which direction we're facing. Um, one goal that we have is trying not to ex install any kind of external camera or anything like that. We use a compass sensor to kind of work around that. Uh, Colin and I worked on developing a rotation routine um, that uses the desired heading um, and your current heading to actually turn your robot in 45 degree increments so you can handle diagonal motion as well as horizontal and vertical. Um, we also developed an auto calibration routine because each magnetometer chip is slightly different. It has its different hard iron offsets. And the auto calibration um, accounts for that and can recenter all the data so you get an accurate arc tangent. Um, ben and I also worked on developing a wireless interface to this. So we used the XB Series 2. Um, we designed a specific command format, so it includes um, the robot ID, whether or not to calibrate, um, whether or not to center the robot, whether or not the piece is captured, which direction it is, and how far to move. Um, and so the computer actually broadcasts via one XP device, and all the robots receive that command. They check the robot ID that they matched, and they actually perform that command. Um, at the very end, we, Andrew Seedorf, developed the, a PCB, um, because when you have 32 of these robots, it, we didn't push the breadboard all of them. Um, so we have this, it's basically an, an Arduino Mega Shield, which allows for all the motors to be plugged in, um, all the sensors to be plugged in, it makes it a little bit easier. We also have a couple of relays, uh, so that we can turn on and off devices so we don't waste so much power. Um, and uh, thank you for time, I encourage you to come by and check out, we're on the second floor, so um, if you have any questions. Yes? How do you handle the movements of the knife? So the, the, basic, the way this moves is uh, we get a heading and we can go a certain number of squares forward. So what happens is the computer science team actually has a path calculation. So if they see they need to castle, which is where you switch the rook and the, and the king, um, or they need to move a knight, you move a piece out of the way first, and then you move that guy. Um, oh, I was hoping you'd use a little hover. <laughs> <laughs> we actually worked in uh, Dr. Beansbaum's uh, block after lab, so maybe down the line they'll pick that up, but uh, we'll see. Any other questions? So, did anyone of you participate in any of the uh, first robotics competition? Not that I'm aware. I participated in best robotics. Okay. Um, down in Houston, actually, one stage myself. Okay. <laughs> but um, it was really nothing. I mean, it was very dissimilar. I mean, that was very <coughs> controlled, direct control. This is kind of, once you start it up, you think it was on its own. So, did the mechanical engineering team develop the robot? Or right. That? So it was actually, we had a uh, bi-monthly meeting, so all, like, all the teams, um, so about 13 people, three people <coughs> in the team, all meeting up. And so we had constant feedback, okay, well, we need this kind of sensor module made in the mechanical team. Would be, okay, well, we have to add space for that on our robot. Um, the PCB has three mounting poles, so we had to relay that to the mechanical team. Um, so we actually, we've gone through several stages. Originally, you know, we had Alpha, which was the tank, Beta, which was a plexiglass model, and then that final product was an aluminum model, um, which is something that's, you know, version one. I guess. It has an XB series, uh, just a wireless interface device that it communicates serially. Um, so it just sends the data and we have comma separate, all the values are comma separated and semicolon terminated. 
Um, so we get all those values, and the row actually will, will parse that and decide if it's a valid command. So check that out. If you're trying to move nine squares, then it cancels it because it's too far. How far? Yeah. Uh, max is seven squares um, in any direction. So if you're one far away from Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I think we tested it to be about like 100 feet right now, but that, did, that was kind of in the building. Um, so we just did a quick test to make sure it was a like, usable distance, um, but we didn't test outside, just in clear area. Do you expect any issues once you have other feet on the board? Um, there are a little bit, uh, there are issues with that, um, mainly because we have to write this, the centering routine. So if you're not quite in the center of the square, you, know, you might have this side collision. Um, but so part of our, our going street code actually now enters the heading. So if you suddenly start to kind of the, the diverge, you can kind of come back to that heading. Uh, but the main issue is going to be is a lot more testing just with all the pieces to, to try to account for all these little errors. Um, but we have communicated the, the CS team to make sure they have some kind of like stop so you can go in and manually fix things and, and modify things if you need to. So at the end of the game, when, we, when someone won and you've got pieces off to the side, you like hit a reset button and everything moves to this property place? So <laughs> right now, actually, we haven't decided how we want the taken pieces to operate. So if it's taken, if you just leave the square, or leave it the board, the main issue is that we're kind of building this with the chess plaza, and the white square is the exact same color as the bordering tiles. So once you leave the chess board, you can't, I mean, you can try to go backwards and then kind of guess. But the idea is more, maybe you just go put the pieces back where they're supposed to be, um, at least right now. But that could be for another team to, to figure out. Alright, so, try to find the